Hello everyone, welcome uh, to the Winter School. Uh, this is a virtual uh, event uh, and uh, we are happy to have you. Uh, uh, I start with uh, some uh, general information about the uh, the school and also ISC. And then uh, Karim will introduce uh, the speakers and also uh, uh, the talks. And uh, he will give us uh, more information about the talks. Uh, so, uh, Iranian Society of Cryptology is a non profit organization which is devoted to promoting the science of uh, cryptology. Uh, it has several activities. Uh, one of the activity of IASC uh, is publishing the uh, ISEQ journal. Uh, this uh, journal uh, has been published since uh, 2009, and uh, it, uh, it's, uh, it, it also has uh, indexed uh, by Web of Science, ISI, and also uh, Escopus. Uh, you can visit the uh, journal uh, website for more information. Uh, journal. Another activity of ISC is uh, uh, holding uh, an annual conference. Uh, it's International ISC Conference on Information Security and Cryptology. Uh, this year it will be held in Tehran in August. Uh, and uh, if you uh, are so interested in submitting to this uh, conference, uh, the submission deadline is 6 June. The good news is that uh, if you uh, have accepted paper in this conference, then uh, the paper uh, will be published in a special uh, uh, in a special uh, issue of ICQ journal. And since ICQ journal is indexed by uh, Scopus and ISI, uh, maybe uh, students uh, uh, find that it uh, uh, and other researchers find it uh, interesting. Uh, and good opportunity for publishing paper. And uh, another important uh, issue is that if you are not able to attend uh, in the conference and come to Iran in Tehran, uh, you can present your paper online in the conference. Uh, another activity of IUSC uh, is uh, uh, holding, uh, holding a winter school. Uh, the first winter school was held in uh, 2020 and the, the topic was about symmetric cryptography. Uh, and the second one uh, was held virtually in uh, 2021, and uh, it was about secure implementation aspects of, uh, I mean, uh, implementation of uh, cryptographic uh, primitives uh, in a secure way. So, uh, in, the, in the second IEC Winter School, we, uh, actually, we had 10 uh, speakers, uh, and you can visit the website. Uh, uh, all slides and videos are available. Uh, and uh, this year, we have we are happy to uh, have uh, the third winter school. Uh, and the topic of the winter school is secure computation, and it, and it includes three main topics, zero knowledge proofs, multi-party computations, and fully homomorphic encryption. And again, we have 10 uh, speakers. We are very happy to have uh, uh, these excellent speakers. Uh, my colleague, Karim Bakari, after me, after my presentation, will introduce uh, the speakers and also the talks. Uh, and then uh, we will start the first uh, session by Jens Gruss uh, in around, uh, I think, 20, half, 20 minutes or half an hour. Uh, to prepare students for this winter school, we had uh, uh, a pre-school event. It was in... Uh, it was uh, all of the lectures were given in patient. So if you can understand uh, patient, you may be uh, you you may want to visit uh, the, the website of the of this workshop. It, it was a one day workshop, and all of the slides and uh, also videos are available uh, in the uh, website that you can see here. And the link of the workshop also is available in the web website of the Winter School. 
uh, we were happy that uh, it was a successful, uh, it was uh, held uh, successfully uh, at uh, Shahid Beshi University, uh, more than 100 students and the researchers attended uh, in this event. And uh, now we are in the third winter school, we start uh, today, so maybe uh, you, 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 maybe you are not familiar with the platform that we are using for uh, this uh, winter school. We are using uh, this platform, which is called Skyborn. And uh, if you look at the environment uh, on the top right, you can see uh, the waste hand, uh, uh, something there, you figure like this. If you press raise hand, uh, then uh, the session chair can give you uh, microphone uh, uh, and you can unmute your microphone uh, uh, and then you can ask your question. We also have on the left bottom uh, the chat box but please don't use it uh, for asking your question uh, and inset you can uh, see in the chat box uh, we provide you a, a link to Discord. questions and uh, anything that is related to the sessions so you can so please uh, join uh, discord uh, by uh, following uh, this uh, uh, link and if you have not registered to discord it's very easy first uh, register to the discord server and then uh, by clicking uh, to the link that is available in the chat box of the at the moment uh, you can uh, join uh, the uh, winter school uh, the, uh, Discord. Uh, very few more points. Uh, we will uh, add uh, videos uh, to the YouTube and other uh, channels of ISC. Uh, the username, uh, the ID name uh, in the YouTube is Iran Tweet. So you can simply find it. But we will also add it uh, to the winter school web page and also slides will be available soon after uh, uh, giving the presentation by the speakers. And if you have any question or you face any problem, please uh, feel free to contact us uh, by the email that is uh, provided uh, in the, uh, here in this uh, slide and also it's available in the web page of the winter school or just simply uh, add your comments in the discourse. Uh, okay, thank you very much for your attention and I hope that uh, you will enjoy this uh, winter school. Uh, that's, I, I think that's enough. And uh, Karim can continue uh, uh, by, present, by introducing the speakers and also giving more information about the winter school what, uh, participants and uh, all of the talks that we have. Uh, Karim, are you available? Yes, thank you, Hadi. So thank you very much, Hadi, for a great introduction that you had about the ISC. Yeah, I mean, I would also encourage, I mean, students to consider this journal. It's interesting in journal to have, I mean, if you want to have, I mean, journal papers during your PhD or your studies. So yeah, I mean, let me just move on to the uh, introduction about the school and the topics. Uh, Karen, uh, do you want also to turn on your uh, camera? Yeah, yeah, just give me a second. Okay, maybe now you should see me as well. Yes. Is it fine? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, and now I will move on to the introduction to the school and the topics that we will consider. So, Hadi already gave a short introduction, but I will go through to the program that we have uh, set for you and also the speakers that we have. So as you already saw, it's, it's about, of course, secure computation, but for secure computation, we need different tools. We will introduce them, basically zero edge proofs and multi-party computation and fully homomorphic encryption during this next three days. So this uh, presentation basically that I have is divided into two parts. I will first give some statics about the participants, your registrations and people that we have here. And then I will give some motivation behind secure computation and the reason behind. So, Yes, we didn't expect to see really this amount of participants, but it's a great pleasure to have you. Uh, basically, we have 273 uh, participants from more than 30 countries. So you can see here the distribution of the participants. Basically, we have almost close to 50% from Iran and uh, India, 
and then Belgium and USA, you see that the Germany, basically we have eight, almost we have 60 people from Europe and uh, some people from even North America and South and some mostly from Asia. So it's, it's a good, I guess, even to collaborate and discuss and also for networking. And uh, the balance between the participants is also interesting. So we have more than 100 uh, undergraduate and master students. And uh, also, interestingly, the same amount, I mean, the number of people, basically, we have PhD students. And it's our pleasure to have 38, basically, postdoctoral or, I mean, professors or lecturers at the university. It's a good uh, opportunity for students to ask their question. Maybe we will have even colleagues to answer your questions in the, uh, basically, this Discord server. And we have also people from industry. We welcoming to all of you. Basically, it's a good opportunity to collaborate even with academic people and uh, industrial people, I mean, here in the event. So you may be interested about uh, basically why we selected these topics. And the statistics shows that basically more than 183 people of uh, participants, they like all these three topics. Some of them like Zorange proofs and MPC, and some like Zorange proofs. And some are interested about the combinations of Zorange proofs and FHE. You can see the numbers here but more than 180 people are interested in all three topics that we have in this uh, event. And uh, if you add them together, basically more than 200 people are interested in all three topics. You see that basically uh, minimum is 214, so these topics are quite interested for, I mean, participants. That's, that's a good pleasure, I mean, for us as well. And uh, for some reason, maybe Zoranich proofs is more interesting, so I'm popular for some of them. <clears throat> So in the second part, so yeah, let's move on to the motivation. So why, why we have selected this topic for the school. So you, of course, uh, know that uh, our main goal in crypto is to take care of uh, data, any data that basically we are either transferring or, I mean, storing. The interesting thing is that in the past, in the early days, this goal was just protecting crypto. So for you, it was only important to have a secure communication by, let's say, encrypting your data. But later, people started to use, let's say, some platforms like as cloud, and they started to store their data in clouds, online, basically, storages. And usually, they are publicly available. Maybe even if you have a password for your account, this data can be basically compromised by the server that uh, keeps them, or the servers can be hacked. So now the goal is a little bit higher. We not only require to have uh, basically uh, secure communication, but we only also want to store this data securely. Basically now the two places to attack is this communication channel and also this uh, that we want to store the data. And at some moment we query to read this data. For example, you want to do search on something or some any, or mean read this picture or copy your picture or something like that. But recently, we even are interested in something more. <laughs> you may ask, what is that? So you need to store this data and also do computation on them. In basic forms, sometimes you may do this computation over the I mean, clear and plain values. Let's say you send your input x and your function, and you get basically evaluation of this function from the server, let's say this Bob. And uh, you also want to get sure that this computation was done correctly. So sometimes you need to attach a proof for this uh, computation. Even recently, we are interested to do this stuff on encrypted data. We don't want to share our, I mean, let's say input X. Sometimes you want to just send our encryption of X and then do the computation over the encryption of X and then return the results such that we can decrypt this uh, encrypted uh, computation and then, re I mean, obtain this F of X too. So you see that in different scenarios, we have to compute something. And recently, we, got, we are interested to do this in a secure way. And of course, you know that secure computation opens, I mean, doors to the many interesting applications. You can do, let's say, some, you have some sensitive information, for example, your uh, medical information you want to share with some doctor, some people in hospital, and you don't want to share details, but you want to allow them to do this computation over this encrypted data. So, I mean, this is the tools that you will need. Now we will see how it works. 
So we already mentioned that zero-knowledge proofs basically allow us to prove the integrity of a given computation. For example, you compute this f, some either in public input x1, plus sometimes with a witness uh, or secret input from the, maybe the second party. It helps you. So you can use zero-knowledge proofs to uh, prove that you did this computation correctly. But on, on the other side, sometimes you want to do this computation over the encrypted data. You don't want to reveal this, uh, I mean, public input, let's say X. You want to send just some secret input, uh, X2. And in that scenario, you can use basically fully homomorphic encryption, which would allow you to do the computation on the encrypted data. But meanwhile, okay, I would like to get the results. But on the other hand, I would like to get sure that you did this computation correctly. And here is the basically place that zero knowledge proofs comes into play. So zero knowledge proofs gives you this possibility that you do the computation over, let's say, encrypted data, but again, you can use zero knowledge proofs to prove them that integrity of this computation. And in some scenarios, I mean, you want to even do jointly some secure computation, such that, let's say, this secret input, let's say, X, is distributed among several parties. Let's say here five parties. So each of this x1 till x5 are, I mean, inputs of secret inputs of some different parties. They want to evaluate some function on their secret inputs. So you see that sometimes we need to do secure uh, computation, or sometimes you want to even just delegate, uh, outsource this computation that you have to different clouds, and you don't want to just give it to the one, but then you want to distribute it to several. So this MPC also allows them to do this computation and return back to you, I mean, the output without learning anything. I mean, you wouldn't learn anything about the inputs and you will get the results. And sometimes they also attach a proof using zero knowledge proofs or they have also different techniques to do these proofs. And the topic of this is called is an intersection of these three topics, basically zero knowledge proofs, MPC and FHE. So to do this security is like as functional encryptions, but these three are quite uh, known and uh, famous ones. So we cover in this uh, basically school. So about the lectures, so maybe probably, of course, uh, you have checked the program. So you have noticed that for each uh, topic, basically MPC, ZROJ and FHE, we have three hours lecture. And uh, for zero-knowledge proof that I mentioned, the goal is to prove that you have evaluated a function over public input X and the secret uh, input witness. Uh, we have three lectures, and uh, basically the first one is by indistinguished, I mean, cryptographer, uh, Professor Jens Grot, and the second one is with, uh, I mean, Dr. Carla Raffels and Dr. Cyprian uh, de Saint uh, Gulliham. So you see that uh, we have uh, quite uh, related, basically, concepts, uh, I mean, to the zero knowledge proofs, but mostly we have focused on non-interactive version of them because they are quite popular in this day. I mean, these days that we see in blockchain or different applications. So we, we will, I mean, mostly will focus on non-interactive zero knowledge proofs and then their uh, state-of-the-art constructions they called ZK snarks and especially the universal ones, because they don't need uh, this trust a third party. They have a setup which is updatable, which allows the parties to update. So this is a cool thing about that. And then, I mean, we will move to the new uh, technique of building such zero-knowledge proofs that basically are post-quantum secure because they are using just symmetric cryptography. And it's called uh, MPs in the head, and we will have a state of the heart, I would say, I mean, state of the art construction in this area, different speakers. So we will have the starting with uh, Emanuela Orsini. I mean, uh, she's a professor in Italy. And we will have an introduction about the MPC and the known protocol, which is called the speeds. Then we will have a very specific top, I mean, presentation by Michele from University of Edinburgh on round optimal MPC protocols. And then we will, we will have two one-hour lectures by a young researchers, Arushi Goel and the Yunus Talebi, that they did uh, great jobs in their PhD, and they will present about uh, basically MPC with dynamic parties and also financial applications of MPC. We will see more details on them. But I can say that in this two first uh, presentation, we will assume that the participants are, I mean, 
selected and constant and fixed at the beginning, but in, I mean, the follow-up presentation, the, the number of parties even can change. So in the third uh, topic of the school, basically, I mean, FHE, we will again have uh, uh, three speakers that basically will go through to the foundations of this FHE, to the concrete protocol by, I mean, uh, great and uh, distinguished speakers in this area. And uh, we will close this session also with applications of FHE. We will see more details during the day of the event even more. I mean, to tomorrow and I mean the day after that. So for today, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, basically three lectures. And we will start with some introduction about Zranj proofs because they are sort of necessary for uh, the follow-up uh, presentations. And then we'll continue with the MPC uh, by basically Emanuela, and then we'll uh, end up the day by uh, uh, third uh, lecture, which is called basically MPC2, because you will have the second lecture of the I mean, MPC. And you already uh, saw the settings that uh, in Zuraj Proofs, you have basically two parties to convince the other, and in MPC, you have several parties to do the computation. And in the last one, we have combinations of these MPCs and trying to minimize the runs by using different efficient non checkers range proofs. Thank you very much. Yeah, this was the introduction to the event. So I guess now we will have a few minutes to start the first lecture. Let me know if you have any question or points that you uh, may be interested to ask about any of this topic.